Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and after Sony's big PS5 reveal and Microsoft's recent Xbox Series X showcase, I can't wait for these next-gen consoles to finally come out later this year, even if they will probably cost 550 or 600 pounds. But in the meantime, after the game's console itself, it's the TV you play it on that will make the biggest difference to your gaming experience. So if you are thinking about upgrading soon to be next-gen console ready, let me run you through everything you need to know for getting the best gaming TV possible. And to demonstrate, I've got this ridiculous 77-inch LG OLED TV. It's the G10 model, which is definitely overkill and way out of budget for most people, uh, but it's a good way of demonstrating the latest tech. So at number one, and this is pretty obvious, but the most important thing to look for when buying a new TV for the new games consoles is make sure it's a 4K TV. I mean, even the current PS4 Pro and Xbox One X benefit from 4K, although it varies between games and can sometimes rely on upscaling but it should be pretty standard for next-gen consoles. And what some people don't realize is that most 4K TVs also support HDR, high dynamic range. They tend to come as a package. And although the quality and the formats of HDR can vary, generally, if you go out and buy a 4K TV from the past couple of years, you'll also get HDR, which means you get much richer and brighter colors, along with that higher 4K resolution. Of course, you will still be able to play these fancy next-gen 4K games on your current 1080p or HD TV, it's all compatible, but you will be missing out on that extra resolution, the extra sharpness, and you know, if you're gonna spend a lot of money on a new console, you kinda wanna get the best out of it. So that's the first thing, make sure it's 4K, but don't worry about 8K, which a lot of people are starting to talk about this year. Even though it's been all but confirmed they will technically support 8K, right now, 8K TVs are far too expensive, and even the most powerful gaming PC would struggle at that resolution. So if there is any 8K on PS5 or Xbox Series X, it'll probably just be the interface or the ability to watch 8K YouTube videos. Chances are 8K games are a long way off. Now the next thing to think about, which is definitely less exciting and slightly more technical, is HDMI. Next-gen consoles will support the latest HDMI 2.1 standard, which allows for an uncompressed 4K at 120fps with HDR and even 8K at 60. It may not be a must-have right now, but if you're buying your TV to have over the next few years, Paying a bit extra and investing in a newer model with at least one HDMI 2.1 port will make it more future-proof than pretty much any other feature right now. However, it does limit your choices to the latest 2019 and 2020 TV models. LG first introduced it on select models of their 2019 OLEDs, including the popular C9, and of course we get it with the C10 and the G10 I have here, but generally most mid to high end 2020 TVs from big brands like LG, Sony and Samsung will support at least one HDMI 2.1, although I will put uh, a list of them in the description below so you can be sure, but it's also worth checking uh, in the specs, the technical specs, and also reading reviews before you buy. But the thing is, HDMI 2.1 isn't just about resolution and frame rates, it also supports eARC, or Enhanced Audio Return Channel. Now your current TV may already support the older ARC format, but this new eARC version using the 2.1 port can decode higher quality sound, including Dolby Atmos and DTSX. And so if you are pairing your fancy new TV with a new high-end sound system that also supports eARC, such as the Sonos ARC I've got here, or a select few soundbars from some big TV manufacturers, again, I'll leave links in the description, then having eARC will give you the best possible audio. I mean, good sound is just as important as good picture quality. So the fact is, HDMI 2.1 is pretty important for next-gen consoles, but it does also limit you to the latest TVs, and therefore it may be beyond your budget, in which case I'd suggest either waiting till November for Black Friday, where we often see some big discounts on the latest models of TVs, or even waiting till next year. I mean, the games consoles don't come out till the end of 2020 anyway, at which point uh, 2.1 will be more commonplace, or even you could find a 2019 model that supports it, such as that LG C9, and maybe get that second hand for a good deal. But let's get back to the games, and most TVs these days have a dedicated game mode which turns off a lot of processing and background features to give you the fastest response time and lowest input lag possible. Now frustratingly, like PC monitors, every TV is a little bit different. Some are faster than others, so this is where reading reviews will really help out. A lot of new TVs, including this LG G10, offer something called ALLM, or Automatic Load Latency Mode. So when you turn on your console, it'll automatically switch to game mode and then give you the lowest latency possible. Generally, a response time of under 10 milliseconds is good, below 5 is great, but some of the best TVs out there, including this LG G10 I've got here, as well as other 2020 OLEDs, boast just one millisecond response. So there's no blurry ghosting, and there's almost no perceptible input lag. 
All right, moving on. And one of the big new features of the next-gen consoles is that they're gonna support higher refresh rates, up to 120 hertz at 4K. Now, not every game will support that, and we may see some developers opt for 1080p at 120, but having a TV that supports high frame rates will be really important for both new consoles and if you hook up a gaming PC. It'll guarantee that you can get that full 120Hz where it's supported. And if you've ever used a high refresh gaming monitor with your PC, then you'll know that the jump from 60 to 120Hz is a big deal. All right, we're almost there, but one more thing to think about is a gaming feature we saw introduced in some 2019 TVs, but it's becoming more common this year, and that's the support for FreeSync and even G-Sync. The Xbox One X already supports FreeSync, so it's likely both next-gen consoles will, and it means we get a smoother image with less screen tearing. LG were also the first to add G-Sync compatibility, so if you hook up your gaming PC with either an Nvidia or AMD graphics card now, then you can make use of FreeSync or G-Sync and get a better gaming experience. So there's lots to think about, and I've just been concentrating on the gaming features. We've not even talked about QLED versus OLED, or you know what size of TV you should buy, or even whether you should go for the PS5 or the Xbox Series X. That's definitely a conversation for another video. I genuinely am excited for both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, although I think right now maybe I'm leaning towards the PS5, but I'll probably end up getting both because, well, I love playing games. But I have to say, having a good new TV that supports things like, you know, 4K, HDR, high refresh rates, and the HDMI 2.1, so it's future-proof, and of course, this guy being an OLED, it does amp up that excitement just to the next level because I can't wait to see what all those next-gen games will look like on a gorgeous new TV. But what about you? What TV are you using at the moment? And if you are thinking about upgrading, which one do you have your eye on? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I think the new LG 48 inch C10 is gonna be really popular this year. But if you've got any more questions, let me know in the comments below. And I'll also put some recommended next gen ready TVs in the description below. Thank you so much for watching guys. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more from me. And I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat.